Hey guys. So I miss Dawn, just in case you've forgotten because you haven't seen me in so long. And I'm here at Campus Church, and you're not. And I miss you. I miss getting together and playing crazy games and talking about God and Jesus. I miss seeing you guys play volleyball. There's so many fun things that we did, and this time is weird, right? You guys did digital school back in the spring, and you started off digital again, and some of you are still doing it online, and that's great. And some of you are now going back to school in person, and that's great too, and you're, you're wearing a mask all the time, and life is weird, isn't it? Some of you don't get to play sports. It's sad. Some of us watch football games with cardboard cutouts in the stands. What's that all about? Here's the deal. This life is different right now. But even though a lot of things have changed, even more has stayed the same. You are still a child that is created in the image of the one true God. And he loves you more than anything. And you have a church. Even if we only get to meet through a camera lens, you have a church that loves you and that is here for you. God is always here for you. He is for you. He is making a way through this crazy time for us. We're all going to get through this together. So hang in there. Now, this month, we're talking about friendship. Now, that's not because I think that I want you to have a million friends. That'd be cool, I guess. But the reason we're talking about friendship is because that is who God is. We're defining friendship as showing others you care with your words and your actions. Well, that's who God is. He loved us so much that he has given his, us his word through the Bible. He speaks to us through, through other people, right? He still speaks to us today. He also showed us his love through his actions. You know, in the Old Testament, he led his people. He led the Israelites with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And he, in the New Testament, he sent us Jesus. Jesus died for us because he loved us, even before we loved him. That is how God loves. And that's how we should love others too. So this month, let's focus on being the kind of friend that shows others who God is and how God loves. You don't have to say, hey, I love you. You can show people you care with your words and your actions. We can do this. Now, coming to you at home is a pretty blue box, okay? And I have a challenge for you. We used to do neighborhood kits way back in the day, right? Well, we can't get together in large groups right now, but I'm challenging you and your family to figure out a way that you can invite somebody else in, okay? Where you can go deeper into a friendship with somebody else and have some fun even during a pandemic. Figure out the comfort level that's okay for you and your family. You might have a friend at school that needs, hey, you just wanna get to know them better. Or maybe it's the new kid, or maybe it's the kid around the corner that you just didn't really get to know until we were in our neighborhoods all the time. Whatever it is. Maybe it's that you need to treat your siblings with more friendship. You need to show them with your words and your actions that you do love them and not fight. So in this kit, there's just a couple of things that you get to play with, okay? There's hacky sacks and ping pong ball games that you guys can play from a distance on your own because there's a kit, supplies for that person and supplies for you, all right? So you can keep your distance and stay safe. Have some fun this month exploring friendship with others. Bud. D's. Buddies. Ch ums. Chums. Ami. Goes. Amigos. P Owls. Pals. Fr Frothy. Frothy. No, no, listen. Fructose. 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 Mm -mm. Fru. Ontogenesis. Frontogenesis. Why aren't you saying that? 
Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm with you this time. Okay. Okay, right. Mashed pate. Toes. Thanks for that. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the So and So Show. I'm John, he's Brandon, and we're friends. That's correct. We know each other so well, we can finish each other's soup. Taco soup. That is true. We both do like taco soup. You know what they say. Friends are friends for, for as long as the money's rolling in. Some people do say that, but not us. Never. No, no, we are as close as two peas in a pod. Poncherello. Poncherello, that's 1970s motorcycle cop show of chips. Yeah, we know each other so well. Hey, can you guess what I'm going to say next? Of course. Please, Please welcome someone, someone who knows stuff. stuff. All right. Woo. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, please sit down. I'm actually used to standing, if you don't mind. Oh no, sure, we'll stand up too. Oh uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Sally Joggins, and I'm a water volunteer for Marathon Runners. A water volunteer? That's right. When marathon runners are in the middle of the race, they can't just stop off at any watering fountain. That's where I come in. So, so you give water to runners as they run by? I don't just give out water. Anybody could do that. I assess the runners' approximate fatigue and dehydration levels, and then I quickly provide them with the amount of fluids they require to keep them in the race. Heads up, let's go, you're at the 16th mile mark. You're killing it. Are you at a, 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 are you at a marathon right now? I sure am. Oh, cool. How many, how many races have you volunteered for? I volunteered for 278 marathons, half marathons, triathlons, and fun runs all over the U.S., the U.K., and twice in Canada. Wow, that sounds like... You've got this. You're making great time. Let's go. Go, go, go. I love how you're trying to motivate the runners as they go by. Is that something that you always do? Absolutely. You know, after you run so many miles, your body starts to tell you, I don't want to run anymore. Give up, it says. Go take a nap. Oh, I've heard that voice. Right, so I'm over here trying to be the voice that says, you can do this. Keep going. I'm encouraging them. Well, that's pretty... Hey, it's up. Let's go. Yes, you've got this. Come on. You're almost there. Keep going. Help me out. Oh, uh, go. You you can do it. Yeah, run. Put, put the bottom of your feet on the ground repeatedly. Run. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Sally. I feel more encouraged just having you here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we can keep going without you. Hey, don't you quit on me. You get out there, do the show, and finish strong. Do you hear me? I hear you. You've got this. You're the best person for the job. I am. Oh. <laughs> I am amazing. Mm. This is amazing. This is the best water I've ever had. Only the best for the best. Thanks. Now you get out there and you keep encouraging people right now. I always do. Go, keep going. You're the best. Go, go, go. You're the best, Brandon. I know you are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. What up, guys? Hey, Kellen, you got a story for us? I do have a story for you. You can read it yourself in the books of First and Second Kings, or you can stick around and watch a little human head puppet theater. Around 3,000 years ago, God chose a man named Elijah to be one of his prophets. Hello, I am Elijah. I am a prophet of God. He reveals himself to me and relates what he requires. Elijah was waiting on the mountain when God revealed. God spoke to Elijah. Elijah. Lord, 
go to the desert of Damascus. Anoint Elisha as the next prophet after you. Lord, why are you whispering? Because I want you to listen. Oh, that makes sense. Go. So Elijah left the mountain like God told him to, and he found the man that would one day take his place, Elisha. Okay, these names are going to get confusing. Uh, Do these help? They do. Thanks. While Elisha was out plowing in the field, Elijah went up and threw his coat around him, a symbol that Elisha had been chosen as the next prophet. Elisha! Oh, what? Here you are. Dude, what does this mean? You will one day take my place as prophet of God. Oh, far out. No, no. Right here. Righteous. Yes. Uh, I will follow you. Good. Let's go. Oh. So, Elisha became Elijah's servant. And for many years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere. But then the time came for God to do something very special with Elijah. Elijah was going somewhere that Elisha couldn't follow. Elisha, stay here. The Lord wants me to go to Bethel. Just as sure as you and the Lord are alive, I'm going to stay Right by your side. <gasps> Dude, I rhymed! <laughs> so they went down to Bethel. In Bethel, some prophets asked Elisha if he knew that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. Yeah, I know. Be quiet. Elisha, oh. stay here. The Lord wants me to go to Jericho. Jericho's the place where God's sending you. But sure as you're born, I'm going there too. Ah, oh, dude, I rhymed again. Ah, what? So they went to Jericho. In Jericho, some more prophets asked Elisha if he was aware that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. I know. What does everyone keep bringing it up? Elisha, oh. stay. Here, the Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River. If I've told you once, I've told you three times. If you're going someplace, I'm going to go there also. I couldn't think of a rhyme. So they walked to the Jordan River. A group of 50 prophets followed them to the river and stopped nearby to watch what happened next. Whoa! What are we supposed to do now? Swim? Just watch and be amazed. Am I supposed to be amazed yet? I'm trying to take off my coat. Oh! You you, you want me to help? No, no, just, just let Kellen do it. Oh, yeah. Will do. Elijah took off his coat, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. Whoa! (laughs) Tell me, after we walk through the river on dry land, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Oh, please give me a double share of your spirit. That's a tough one. But if you see me when I'm taken away from you, then you will get what you have asked for. If you don't see me, you won't get it. Okay, but what exactly am I looking for? Suddenly, there appeared a chariot with horses made of fire. Ooh. Something like this, I should think. I see it. Whoa. Oh, goodbye, Elijah. You've always been a father to me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wow! Woo! It disappeared! It went into heaven, dude! On a big chariot! Oh! I'm gonna honor him with a great piano piece. After Elijah had been taken up to heaven, Elisha used Elijah's 
coat to cross back over the Jordan River. When the group of 50 prophets waiting there saw Elisha crossing through the Jordan River on dry land, they knew Elisha had been given the spirit of Elijah. The end. Thanks for helping out, guys. Way to tell that story. Way to tell that Bible story, Kellen. You're amazing. Thank you for the encouragement. That's what friends do. It's true. That's what Elisha did for Elijah when he stayed with him right till the end. And what Elijah did for Elisha when he left a share of his spirit. And what God does for us when he gives us the Holy Spirit to help and encourage us through good times and bad. Great points, both of you, both of you. Now get out there and keep telling more Bible stories, Kellen. I will. Go, 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 go. Uh, oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Woo! You're good at that. Encouraging people? Thanks. Oh, that and yelling. Good. Then reveal the question. When has someone encouraged you? You encouraged me when I was learning how to juggle potatoes. That would have worked if you hadn't baked them first. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you encourage me every day. That's because you're the best. You are. You are. Talk about it together. Yeah. When has someone encouraged you? Yeah, we'll see you guys next time for a brand new song. song. I'm telling you, you are. You are. You're the best. Dar. Fader. <laughs> Dar. Fader. <laughs> Churl. <laughs> Lanthropist. <laughs> Lanthropist. <laughs> Lanthropist. Cla. Mms. Cla. Cla. P. Cla. God. You know, Lane, he's been here a few weeks and he's cool and all, but he's just really quiet. Anyway, everybody started talking about getting together at Sky Zone for a BOGO day. That's buy one get one free. I was in the kitchen when we all started setting it up. Everybody texted that they were in. Flynn was in, Elliot, Q was super excited. Even Aiden was coming. We all were psyched, but in the middle of the group chat, I got this alert. Lane's birthday party. It was today. I don't know if his mom didn't know how to let anybody know, or if something went wrong, but nobody was gonna be there. God, there was something that just wasn't right. Lane hadn't really made many friends yet. I mean, we had talked, but I've never been over to his house or anything. So I asked my friends if we could change plans. At first, they weren't sure. But after a few texts, everybody was in. We realized we could do Sky Zone anytime. God, Lane's place was pretty cool. Games, cake, we actually had a lot of fun. I think Lane was really surprised. It was good to kind of get Lane into the group. And next week, we all go to Sky Zone. And Lane's coming too. Thanks God for showing me how to be a good friend to all my friends, Robbie.